Hello there and a very warm welcome to another edition of Channels Beam. I am Victor Mathias. Now, with technology playing a key role in the world's development, players in the industry continue to be on the rise. However, the sector, seen as a male-dominated one, also has women playing. This edition of Channels Beam will focus on women playing in this space, their success, challenges, and ways to encourage more female players in the sector widely regarded as the driver of the fourth industrial revolution. But before we do that, let's take a look at the trending social media hashtags in the past week. A recent decision by the Central Bank of Nigeria to reintroduce various charges on large cash transactions in deposit money banks has generated mixed reactions online. However, in a plenary session, the House of Representatives ordered the Apex Bank to suspend the policy. Reactions have trailed the replacement of Oyoita with Yemi Esson as acting head of the civil service of the federation. President Mohamed Buhari directed Mrs. Winifred Oyoita to proceed on an indefinite leave. Well, there you go. Those were the trends in the past week. But joining us to look at the topic of the day, we have Itohon cool. Ray Kukoi. Thanks for joining us on the program today. It's a pleasure being here. Of course. We also have joining us from our Abuja studio, Blossom Ozurumba. Thanks as well for being part of the program today. Thank you so much, Victor. The pleasure is all mine. Indeed. Thank you once again. Um, again, I would add that um, I think I'm blessed, as they say. Blessed is he amongst the women. Mm -hmm. You sure are blessed. What did you say? You are blessed. Indeed. So, <laughs> kicks out the conversation for us. I mean, the, um, the technology space is one that is seen to be dominated by mostly men. But then, we also have women doing amazing things in that space. And, of course, you are one of them. And, but what has your journey been like, first okay. of all? Like you said, it's um, mainly male. Of course, uh, male um, predominated, like most major industries. My journey started out kind of um, a mistake or, you know, I was building a website to sell books. I encountered Wix, it's a CMS, you can build websites with it, and I was hooked from then. But then um, the main challenge was trying to find a space of people like me, you know, people who looked like me, who understood my story, who understood my peculiar challenges and where I was going to. And um, after looking around in it for a while, I found this um, a WordPress community. But then that was still not everything, you know, because when you look at the industry, mm. just like most industry predominated by men, there's this thing called um, the syndrome. A syndrome feeling that you do not belong there. You know, you are like, do I really know what I think I know? Can I really do what I think I can do mm. when there's so, not as many people in that space? like you. you and then trying to balance family was another thing it was a real huge challenge because most of the times because along the way i also started learning to code mm. i let me go back and say the major challenge is power because we don't have power and most of the things to do with technical you have to learn and yeah. to learn and go online you need power. power and from power and then you need data and data is quite expensive here too then trying to juggle that with your nine to five for women, I think that's one of the reasons why you find fewer women in the space, because it's trying to learn new things. Mm -hmm. And most of these new things, you have to go online to learn them. And then you need to find people that are like you to try and identify with mentors too. Yeah, to and most you. of the times you find out that 
um, um, similar sexes can mentor. You know, they are more comfortable. They are more yeah. comfortable being mentored by a woman like you because she knows your story. She knows your journey. Yeah. So those were the major challenges. Community challenges, um, when no, it was not that bad for me because I found um, Twitter. And Twitter can be all inclusive. If you follow the right people, you can get networks. You can get, you know, pointed in the right direction. Yeah. So the major challenges in summary were power and then you know, finding my community, finding people like me yeah. that could relate with what I did. You're doing. Yeah. Uh, very well. Um, Blossom, let me bring you into the conversation. I mean, uh, she just uh, told us about her own story, how she got into tech and, of course, um, some of the challenges that she faced. But what is your own story? What was it like for you, you know, being part of the space that, I mean, more often than not has been dominated by the male folk? Oh, thank you so much, uh, Victor. Uh, as early as uh, 2008, um, I, I remember that was actually my very first foray into the whole tech um, digital space, you know. So I started out as a blogger, and um, it was basically to break um, news stories, and as it's happening, just try to um, put it out there. So the thing about blogging is by the time you have your, your blog and then you have to go to the back end to post your stuff and all that, probably use the text editor or the visual editor, either one that works. So it, it took me a bit of, a, of time to learn through that route. It's not like there was no school you would go to for someone to teach you what to do. That's right. So it was basically... Um, learn to do it yourself mm -hmm. and in learning to do it yourself you make all the mistakes and then you correct them as as it, mm -hmm. as you progress and then with time you will just find yourself becoming better in what you do and you would also find yourself um, being really um, elated and excited about learning yeah. even more awesome. so it was just a journey um, th that was just progressing um, probably stemmed by, stemmed by my excitement and then my curiosity as well. So over time, um, I, I then found myself transitioning into um, learning how to build a website, learning how to um, probably just knock one or two codes together here and there and then hope that I would be able to get um, the results that I wanted. So bottom line, it wasn't very difficult for me um, to come into that space. I think I'm just a natural learner. Um, so long as I have my internet and I can go on the web and on the internet and then ask um, the questions that I want from different forums and, and all that. And most times, I, what I also figured out was um, if you probably uh, meet... Um, meet a deadlock you know along the way and you probably just put this as a question online someone somewhere would have had a similar Experience, challenge so yeah. chances of you getting one or two responses or, or or feedback or answers that would just help you turn you the right side up would always be very high yeah. so that has been my experience and i think the biggest challenge i had um was probably trying to 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 marry my passion with my day job. So it was a bit of a difficulty, probably even going out there to look for my tribe or my a community within my, um, my location that would also um, give me the hands-on peer-to-peer um, mentoring or feedback that I desire and all that. But over time, it's, it's been an exciting experience and I've seen myself transition from one stage to the other and, and I'm actually in a beautiful place now where I am just sitting back and then just being really, really enjoying the entire ride and the entire experience. I see. So, I mean, the one thing that has, or one thing that both of you have in common is the fact that, you know, marrying your passion again then with, with family, I mean, how has that been? Um. I think well, the good thing about digital, the digital space is the, the biggest um, 
thing you'd have to sacrifice would always be time. So if you are able to, to probably work your time in such a way that you are able to dedicate um, as much time as you would desire and wish to the things that you are vested in, the things that you are passionate about, then it makes it easier. So you're really not going out of your way to learn new things. Most, most often what you're doing is to try to dedicate the time that you would require to learn these new things because the knowledge is out there. It's for you to just have that commitment and that focus to follow through with what you've um, planned right. to learn. And of course, you know, um, I have kids and when you have children, then you would also need to know how you would be able to balance the whole parenting um, um, parenting lifestyle and then yeah. um, you trying to improve yourself and learn as much as you would want to learn as well. Blossom, if I would ask, um, who do you look up to who, for, for inspiration uh, that, you know, in what you do and like uh, you want to be like maybe and even surpass their achievements in the very nearest future? Um, that, that's a very interesting question, Victor. Um, I would want to, to probably look at it from the perspective of who are the women that are probably providing um, the desired leadership in probably um, big organizations that are tech-focused. Um, maybe you talk about um, Google, you talk about um, Wikimedia Foundation and all that. So a couple of these women that have actually broken the glass ceilings and providing the right leadership um, that is making the organization succeed excellently. Um, I look up to them. Um, there's Catherine Maha, there's Sherry Sandberg, and even locally in Nigeria, we have Funke um, um, for, of the Men One Cable. You know, so some of these women. Um, what I really, what really thrills me about what they do is. Um, it takes uh, more than having tech skills to be able to provide leadership. Um, a, a leader at all times should be able to marry um, a whole lot of skills together to True. be able to lead people in this space. And they are doing an amazing work. And that is what um, inspires me to be able to probably build myself up to that extent where I would be able to to easily, um, you know, lead in that in, in in any space, you know, that would be able to would be lucky to have me. Let me use that word. All right, great. Um, so I mean, for you, I mean, so there's the issue of you know, say cyberbullying and all of that. Have you ever encountered any of such um, in your journey? Mm, cyberbullying. I've mm. never encountered cyberbullying. Maybe because. I'm more of, I'm not a blogger, I'm a blogger. Yeah. I'm more of, um, I build websites and, you know, the digital marketing space. So nobody has ever really bullied uh, okay, me. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, so how has it been, in, I mean, in your own space now, competing yeah. with the male folk, how has it been? Oh, <laughs> a friend of mine told me a funny story. I tried it out and it really works. Let me give you an example. She told me that she found out that whenever her WhatsApp picture was just the logo and not her face, that she got more jobs. Okay. And I tried it, it really did. Most women feel the tech spaces, or me, most guys, or most people, even women, mm -hmm. when they see that it's a woman in charge of the company, or you know, they tend to feel maybe this person doesn't know what the person is doing. So that gives you an example of what it is. So trying to go out into the market and you know, show that I know my stuff, I know my business, because most of the times you are judged by oh, it's a woman that owns this company. So that is what it is. For me, it was like swimming up water, you know, trying to get my momentum. But as more jobs came in, as I did more jobs, I had more referrals and all of that. So it's gotten easier now. Mm. So th th that's, that was the story. That was the story. Yeah. I mean, I can, so I, it I, gives you an idea of yeah. how it is. It's basically like that. Most of my friends, what I've heard online, that is what it is. When they feel, they feel maybe it's a woman, they don't think women are techy or tech savvy or can deliver. Enough to deliver, yeah. yeah. But when you come in, and you know, statistics show that most women are majorly creative. 
very creative and, and very good at gathering people together, very good at marrying various things and juggling and be able to produce results. Of course, people don't follow statistics. I think it's a culture. Hey, know? it was just, uh, I mean, I'd love to see that, you know, mm -hmm. moving forward, but hold your thoughts for a bit. Uh, we'll take um, a quick break and we'll be back in a moment to continue this discussion. Please stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. We still have with us our panelists in the Lagos studio as well as the Abuja studio. Um, you know, so just before we end on break, you talked about those stats and how people don't. But now that you're in the business, um, who are the people you look up to? Who are the women in tech that you look up to as mentors that you want to, um, say, achieve what they've achieved and even surpass? To tell you the truth, in, um, the, you know, in the Nigerian space, most of the women you'll know will be coding, and, you know, that's not only what tech is about. Tech, I would like more people to understand that tech is about if your job or your income relies heavily on technology, that's what tech is, not only the coders mm. that are tech. Okay, so most of those here, I wouldn't, I don't have, um, that's another issue in the female, in um, the, the industry. Yeah. There are not lots of women to look up to over here. If you talk about what I'm doing, there's not lots of, but if you talk about outside, that, that's Neil Patel, that when you're talking about, is in the SEO industry, he does SEO, digital marketing and all of that. That's for now who I look up to. There are some women in the work, um, WordPress um, space, space, but they don't do exactly what I do. Tech is not um, a one door thing. It's, it's kind of varied. My market, my space, my, my niche, I really don't have one. So I piece together. That's basically what I do for now. Yeah. I piece together various information. I get a mentoring from watch and follow people severally. That's what I do for now. Justin, wrapping up now. So what are you doing to inspire more women to be part of this space? Um, I think this would be a, a good time to talk about the work that we're doing with the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, sometime last year, um, because I you know, I identify as a as an advocate for Igbo language and culture. Um, what I did was I brought a couple of women together for a particular project, which we call the Igbo Women um, Wiki, a data turn project. So it, it was really successful. We were able to write a lot of um, um, Wikipedia articles um, for women in Nigeria that are of Igbo origin mm. and we are also able to translate a whole lot that we are already existing in the English language platform. Mm. So the success of this um, project, yeah. it was just beautiful. So what we then did was we came together still as women and we were able to then get a user group for focus full, uh, fully on Igbo language and culture. So we call that the Igbo Wikimedians um, user group. So the, the, the beautiful thing about the user group is, is we are 70, over 70% 70 of the members of that user group are women. Mm. And of course, when you have women um, that are able to make decisions about what they write, about the kind of content that they would want to 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 create on, on Wikipedia and other projects of the Wikimedia Foundation, it's quite easy to, it's quite convenient for it to be, you know, um, um, content that are also um, women focused Driven. as well. Yeah. So the, what we've done so far, what we've done so far is to try to build that user group and and see how we can be able to extend it to all the five um, southeastern states that you have native speakers of the Igbo language. All right. So this, it's, it's, it's a group that is women-driven, mm. and it, it, it's, you know, it's still a, a journey, it's still a work in progress, and over time I've been able to see that when you have women in the room making the right decisions, about what they want to create, about what they want people to consume. It will always most likely be um, um, content that are women focused. And this, to a large extent, um, would always help to, to bridge the gender gap that you have um, 
currently existing on the Wikimedia um, Foundation projects like Wikipedia. So where you have a lot more content, content especially for persons, yeah. um, content on men than on women. So we are small by small, small steps. Uh, like trying you to know, reach that gap, like you know, like 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 starting with our community, like like they say, yeah, like they say, you know, a journey of a million miles begins with a step. So um, I would say good luck, you know, with what you're doing, and I hope that uh, by the end of the day, you get more women, you know, to be part of this community. But I'd have to say thank you to you for joining us today on the program from our Abuja studio, Blossom Ozurumba. Well, in your own space, what are you doing quickly also, okay. uh, you know, to, to get more women on board? Thank you for the question. I'm involved with the, um, the WordPress community. So we're gathering a special focus, like for me and a few more people, is on making sure women know that they can come into a safe space, welcoming community where they can get answers to their questions, where we can lead them to write and any tips that they need for growth. So like so, mentoring? Yeah, we mentor. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what we're doing for now. Well, I can't wait to see more women in the space, you know, doing amazing things, you know, yeah. breaking the glass ceiling and um, creating more apps. And if and, I can say more, I'd like to add that it's a very good thing that it starts from the beginning. It starts from inception, yeah. where parents left their, apart from the toys or looking for safe, people want safe careers for their kids. Maybe you direct them more into medicine or something that's stable. Yeah. It's more pardonable for a male child to be unstable as they see the tech industry. Mm -hmm. But it has evolved. They can start with new pro these new pro apps like Scratch, you know, introduce them to um, um, tech, introduce them to um, safe spaces, Could safe they should groups, introduce more where women they can from, learn. Yeah. yeah, to their girls, yeah. STEM toys, things. But it starts from there so that more women can come into the industry. I can't wait to see that happen. Yeah. But again, I have to say also thank you to you for joining us um, on the program today. It's our Andre Kukui from the WordPress community. Thank you once again. Thank you so much. Uh, coming up next is the Movie videos on our YouTube channel in the past week. Please stay with us. This week's most viewed video begins with this recording of Nigerians affected by South Africa xenophobic attacks lament their losses. The situation is very bad. You can see the old shop everywhere. They are really burning to their loot. Everything was born in two leaves by mother. Nothing dear. I can't take cream inside my shop. In fourth place, second batch of Nigerian returnees arrive from South Africa. As far as we are concerned, uh, we've received the verdict of this panel and uh, we will be looking forward to another chance at the Supreme Court. In third place, spokesperson of the People's Democratic Party Presidential Campaign Council, Buba Galadema and a legal practitioner, Daniel Bwala, debate ruling of the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal. The truth of the matter in our corpus juris is that no matter how strong you think your case is, if you fail to converse it adequately, there is no way judgment will be given to you because the court is not a father Christmas. In second place, Nigeria police arrest suspected shoprite looters. We recovered a lot of those looted items from them and uh, we got uh, about um, 125 of them arrested. And coming in first is that of Operation World Stroke, parading suspected arms supplier in Benue State. And that's the program this week, but we will keep our hopes high that more women will play in this space moving forward and create far greater things than we have seen. So let's keep the conversation going via the social media addresses showing on your screen and the hashtag Women in Tech. Thank you once again for being part of the show. I'm Victor Mathias. Bye for now.